let me invite Greg Whitworth, Senior Director of Product Management, on the stage. How's everybody doing? That, there we go. Super stoked. Not Kirsten Bell or Seth Myers, but I'll take it. Um, super stoked to talk to you all because, as Aditya just said, uh, I love LWC. And first of all, I want to thank all of you all for the millions of components you all have been building. LWC is the most engaged with uh, component framework on Salesforce, and so I can't thank you enough. That said, there are still reasons. How many of you are still having to, unfortunately, reach for Aura from time to time? Out of curiosity. Okay, not many, but, but again, a few. So, like, unfortunately, you're having to reach from Aura from time to time. We've been hearing your feedback on social media, uh, an idea exchange, as well as our very first state of LWC uh, survey that we sent out at the beginning of the year, and I greatly appreciate all of the feedback you've provided. And while we're wanting to do as much innovation as possible, and that's why I love Readiness Release Live, we get to hear feedback from you all on how to improve things. I'm stoked to talk about, we'll be actually be delivering the first two of these uh, this year. And then also we're doing some introductions and innovations by introducing GraphQL wire adapter support. I am so, so excited to share all of this with you all. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of not a huge fan of talking to too many slides. I love demos, I love code. So Mohit, let's get going with the demo. So first off, we're going to start off with our favorite app. Everybody probably knows if you've been working with Salesforce, the DreamHouse app. If you haven't been working with Salesforce and the DreamHouse app, congratulations, you now work for a real estate company called DreamHouse. And what we've got is we've got over here off to the left-hand side a filtering capability that we're able to drag around. We're able to filter the different properties that we own, we're looking for, and it'll filter on down. And this is, this is great. This is great. We're able to view our different properties. Mohit, let's just jump over to Code Builder and see how that we would go about building this. Historically, we would have spun up an uh, Apex class, we would have written a SoCo query, uh, and quite long and verbose, and we would have bound it to our LWC component to render out that select view. This works, but it's not necessarily right within the context of the component that I'm working on and actually rendering that data. So what we're doing is we're introducing GraphQL, which is an industry standard support for wire adapter. So if we switch over to the similar component for list view, what we do is we import the wire adapter. We then, if we scroll down, you'll see our GraphQL down below. And what we're doing is we're actually passing in those variables using the Lightning Messaging Service right in top. We're putting those into the parameters. Then down below, we're using that where clause and the and clause in order to do our sorting. And then we're able to sort, we're able to order, and the real power of GraphQL is down here at the base. No longer do you have to think about joins, inner joins, left joins, right joins, all those wonderful joins. All you need to do is say, the data that I care about is this data. It does one request. You're not having to do multiple requests to diff across different things. It stores it right within the variable in the context of the, the component where you're working with it. This is in uh, GA this release. Go use it. Super stoked about it. Please go use it. Uh, up next, the second most requested gap between OR and LWC is the Workspace API for console applications. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump back to the DreamHouse demo, but this time, maybe you're the manager of various brokers. Uh, and so let's go ahead and take a look at Jennifer Wu's uh, work. So off to the right here, we have a Lightning component, and it's got different properties. And when we click on it, it opens those sub-tabs. And so what's great about this is if you're commonly doing something, you're able to not have to do hard navigations. You can do quick, quick successions between different tabs. And this is great for your end users to save time, save clicks, all that wonderful stuff. So how do we go about building this? Okay, let's jump back to some code. It's super simple. It's almost too simple to be honest with you. Uh, you import the workspace API up at the top. Then if we scroll down, we're going to use at wire in our LWC component, bind it to that uh, tab ID. We're going to set the tab to focus. We're going to set the tab name. And voila, that's it. We've got the, the sub tabs. That's the second most requested feature. It's in beta, the winter 24. So please go use it. Give us your feedback. I'm super stoked about it going out. Last but not least, definitely not least, the most requested feature by far is dynamic components. So let's go back to the DreamHouse app one more time. I'm actually seeing nods, which is great. Love it. Yes, thank you. So up at the top, we have the toggle. If we switch the toggle, you'll actually see we get a more aesthetically pleasing component layout, which I prefer, because I actually get to see the house, get you know, see what it looks like. So everything still works the same, but how did we switch it? 
So once again, let's jump back over to some code. And you'll see that we have within here this new component type, the LWC colon component. And what this is telling LWC is there's going to be a component here. We just don't know which one. So how do you define which one it is? Well, we came up with a really great name called LWC colon is. And you bind that to the constructor that's in the JavaScript file. So if we jump over to the JavaScript file, up at the top, we, we import the two components, that tile view and that grid view. And we then down below basically determine the state of that toggle. And we basically say, hey, this is the component you're going to use to render in that area. We highly recommend this approach if you know the various components that your, your, your uh, admins or folks may use. Uh, because this is statically analyzable, we can actually optimize for this. That said, there's a reason this is highly requested. Because of the fact that if you're an ISV or a partner, you're building a component for a large org, you may not know which component you're going to render in that space. And because of that, a detail, let's, or, sorry, I'm already screwing up. <laughs> Mohit, let's jump back to the Dreamhouse app one last time, but with a, a slight switch. There's no longer the toggle up at the top. And this is a more common use case of why this is so heavily requested. So if we go, we go in here, we still want to be able to offer that capability for people to switch this view. If we go and we go in, we set up a custom metadata type. If we edit it, we switch over to grid view, we hit save. We then switch back to that tab and hit refresh. It's real. Say, so, OK, cool. The grid, the grid shows up as you would expect. So what's great about this is if we jump back into the code, we are not anymore uh, hard coding in those components. So you can envision having just a text input where somebody could theoretically type in whatever input they would want if we switch over to the code. So uh, up here at the top, we have this apex that we're, we're basically fetching that custom metadata type. And what we're doing is we're actually concatenating that into a variable. And so what we're able to do is use that same LWC colon component, but we're now pulling that down dynamically. It is completely dynamic. That said, I'm going to be Spider-Man for a second. With great power, actually, Spider-Man's uncle. With great power comes great responsibility. There's a reason why we don't necessarily recommend this for all scenarios, because it has performance implications. And because of that, like, use it sparingly. But there are real world scenarios where you do want to use this, so please use it. Uh, moving on to the roadmap and the slides, we have so much. We couldn't fit into six minutes. Not at all. We have template expressions. We have third party web components. Yeah, please take pictures. Please, yeah, everybody, yeah. Send me these pictures on Twitter, please. I would love them. OK, but yeah, so much is going on. And I'm stoked about that I might want to even tease next year's stuff. Because local development, we're experimenting with it. Let's make it better. Stop having to like, constantly push in order to push up to your org to see your, your changes. I'm stoked about that. Uh, but I'm, I'm thrilled that we were able to land the top two requests. We'll continue to work down that list while continuing to do innovations in LWC. So thank you very much. And back to you, Aditya.